time. We're live. Hey, guys. How is everybody? Oh. I hope everybody had a good weekend. <sighs> How was your weekend? It was good. Busy. Good. Extremely yeah. busy, but yeah. good. <laughs> um, just, you know, we had a pop-up Comic Con here at the store. Yeah. And Sounded like that was very successful. Yeah, it was successful and a lot of fun. Had a lot of people come in. Good. How many got in the chat? Let's see, I am always a little too big. <laughs> yeah. Nobody yet? We might have to talk amongst ourselves for a bit. I'm not seeing anybody either. One waiting. Oh, there, me. Michael's in. Hey, Michael's Michael. In. How you doing? Um, I'm sure my phone's on silent. Still getting a lot of text messages. All right, I'm good. You good? I'm good. All right. Hey, Captain, how you doing? Great job last week. Looking forward to tonight. Thank you, Captain. I appreciate that. Uh, I gotta admit, I didn't put a lot of effort into this week like I did last week, unfortunately. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, I just had an incredibly busy week, and I didn't get to do a lot of the stuff that I wanted to, but I think people will be happy. Well, we'll edu educate them a little <laughs> bit. Um, AJ made it. Hey, AJ. Hi, AJ. I was hoping you'd show up today. You did a great job helping me out last week. Thank you for that. Yeah, kind of going into this blind. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> um, we covered quite a bit of ground last week. Well, we made it all the way to page nine of the rule book. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just so much, you know, well, taking time to, to really yeah. describe what's going on. And I, I probably should have followed the rule book step by step, but I did a couple things out of sequence which led to questions about oh well that we haven't even talked about that yet right so uh, we're getting better michael says sound is a little low i'm checking on my end all right let's adjust our microphones yeah pull that you put it on the other side of your thing yeah, i didn't want to get it in the camera view but all right and how's it sound to you guys is everyone can you hear us okay is that is better it, michael is it hey doug how are you man is it Doug's microphone low, or is it Phil's, or is it both? Um, I'll look at my settings real quick. They both stuck. One of them is kind of low. Sound is low, AJ says. Okay. Why is that? Hmm. Pull yours in just a little, a little bit more. more. It's not on camera or anything. Well, there we go. Oops. Didn't mean to once you tear up everything. All right, is the sound any, sound was low for me last week, says Doug. Oh my gosh, it's a little late to tell us. <laughs> All right, let me, let me see what we got going on here. It should not be low, I don't know. You said it was low last week as well? Yeah, that's what Doug Taylor just said. Yeah, it doesn't look like the bar is going up near as much as what it normally does. Well, let's see here, I'll play around a little. Microphone's on. Um, I don't know, guys, sorry. I'll play with it a little as we go along. You can tell me if anything gets better. Um, it's okay to shove the earpiece farther in. <laughs> Careful, Michael. You know what they say, you're not supposed to put anything in your ear except your elbows. Um, all right. Maybe we're just talking quieter. Uh, I don't know. Everything seems to be the same on my end, but let me know if it does any better. Hey, Brett, how you doing? sound stays low i'll fix i'll find some way to fix it on my own so brett it looks like uh you guys may have got a little uh game time in over the weekend what what did he do yeah, it looks like justin and brett and oh, lawrence and then met up at the uh, hashtag, hashtag arena hashtag arena yeah that's where we ended up playing valhalla last year so yeah, it looked nice. like they had a good time there was, looked like a slew of games that were going on okay so was carl there that's it no, who was in the picture john lewis John Lewis and Brett. Justin, and Justin, a guy named Lawrence. Lawrence. He bought some cars for me, and I introduced them to those guys because they lived in the same vicinity. Okay, and good. So I know he's met up a few times with them. So. Yep. Brett says he's played a few games with the Baltimore crew. Nice. The street continues over <laughs> eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brett. You're just supposed not to laughing count. Laughing at you, laughing with you. Supposed to count how many games you played, not the record. All right. <laughs> Michael says, Phil is coming in really good now. Uh-oh, but I'm not. Get it closer. <laughs> Get it closer. No, now it's getting gotta, on screen. I don't want that. you got to stand on the um, microphone. All right. Uh, Doug, you're okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. 
<laughs> I'm okay, you're okay. All right, well, um, Howard's not shown up yet. At least he hasn't said hi. And neither has Larry. Larry, where are you at? Um, I know I should have brought my water. <laughs> I'll go over there and get a jot to the energy drink. Then I won't sleep tonight. I'm going to start bench pressing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, happy to help. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Um, so we got through page nine, you said? Yeah, page nine. You want to start with page 10? Sure. All right. Page 10, uh, we're going to talk about battle sites. Oh, I don't, why did they have battle sites before act Well, activators would, I mean, any heroes would actually fall under special codes. So let's right. start with any heroes. Okay. Uh, we did talk last week about the special card, how the special card is for the character that's named on it, and only that character can play it. Unless you have an activator. Uh-oh. Michael, don't tell me there's an eclipse in four weeks from now because we might still be on it. <laughs> we might still be talking about this. Um, oops, that's not the right one, Doug. Why is it drawing this to me? I don't know. Oh, this one. No, it's this one. You want oh, Spider Man? I don't want Spider Man. <laughs> Nobody wants Spider-Man. Yeah. Didn't even get in gameplay. Right. Poor Spidey. I, I just closed off Spider-Man. There we go. There's what we needed. The any heroes. Were these the first any heroes? No, they were not. These were the mission control any heroes. Um, if you've been playing the game, the first two sets, the any heroes were the same as these, but they had different pictures. They all did the same thing. Yeah, they were bright yellow. Yeah, the um, uh, the Green Goblin card there, what's that one called? Death from That's Above. Death from Above, uh, yeah. it, it was called Death from Above, but it had the color border of the first set. Um, these were also the promos that were in the comic books. You could play these in your deck, and any one of your frontline characters could play these cards. And Doug Taylor says... Still low for me, can only hear it barely when it's cranked to max volume. Hmm. All right, you go ahead and explain any heroes I was from where I left off, and let me work on them. Okay, so any heroes were um, cards that they produced originally, like Doug said, in the uh, comic books for the original set. Um, then Mission Control came out with these ones. Um, any of your characters could play these cards. They were listed any hero or any character, some of them. Um, and they're just a special um, that you put into your deck. And essentially what it did is it helped you get mm -hmm. to your 51 or 56 cards. Um, there were, as Doug said, Death from Above, Gamma Terror. Um, you had ones that could avoid Teamworks, um, which was called Confusion with Rogue on it there. Uh, you had the Guardian Angel. And as the sets evolved, uh, the Any Heroes evolved. They came out with new ones in later sets. Um, and some of you will know that Devour came out in the very last set, which was X-Man. Um, that's the card that we have banned here this over this past year. Um, so BMG did produce some new any heroes. Um, one of four cards called a Cataclysm, um, which if you're getting into the new cards, uh, they're going to be very nice for you to go ahead and get those cards. Uh, they came out with four new ones, which would have been avoid one special draw a card, which is essentially an LO, like Colossus got in the Mega Powers. Um, they had a draw four, um, discard at any special, draw four cards. Um, with that particular one, they did make you reveal the four cards that you uh, draw. Um, they also came out with a 10 multi, and then they came out with a draw three discard dupes. So those cards are going to be um, essential now that Devour has been banned. Um, yeah, very good cards that you can get from BMG. Hopefully Larry still has some of them. Um, I think that's it on the Any Heroes, Doug. Uh -oh. so I don't know if you want to move to a new image. <laughs> well, I was still trying to fix the sound. <laughs> uh, all right, I or think we, we got it. Yay. All right, 
they said you dropped off until you were almost unheard of. <laughs> oh, nice. But I fixed it. <laughs> All right. I don't think they missed much. Vol now volume is back. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Doug. Good. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank I was just you for I was just saying that the Yenny Heroes were produced in the original out of the comics. They were had a yellow border. They reprinted them in the Mission Control. They essentially do exactly what they say on the card. Um, if you are playing Team Overpower, which is a location, you can place one any hero to your Team Overpower. Um, some of the cards in particular, you can place them in general anyway. Cards like Fortress of Solitude. Um, and then they did make a new Merlin, which is uh, essentially the Bastion, but with a little bit better flavor. Uh, the old Bastion, if you placed it, you could only avoid an, or negate an any hero special. Now with the new Merlin, it's essentially like a straight negate. You can avoid anything, not just any heroes. So made it very uh, universal. Keep going. Give me another minute. Okay. Uh, actually, explain Webheader Wizard, what it can and can't go back and get. Okay. So they made a particular card here. Um, if you look in the bottom right corner, it's called Webheaded Wizard. Um, the original one had Spider-Man with like a clown hat on. And um, that card can go through your dead pile and draw any one special or any one uh, universe card, um, but it cannot get another any hero. So you could not, for instance, go back and get your Power Leech or your Guardian Angel um, or the Gamma Terror, things like that. Um, had to get like a Spawn Nine or less or Star Jammers Draw 3. So it is very powerful, but it was a little bit limited. It was also probably the most misused card It was uh, in the game at one point. Yeah, people still try to get any heroes with it. Yeah. Uh, you would think that you could because it does say... Anyone's Any special. card in the death pile. Right. But they didn't mean that. That's called errata. <laughs> and we discussed that in detail last week. Um, let's let's show uh, Team Overpower. Oops. Oh, sorry. Pull it up there. There we go. This card was actually made as a homage to all the workers who created the Overpower game. And Frank, you... Is it pronounced you? No, that's actually Duncan. 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 Not Frank, you. sorry. Duncan Yuen. Duncan. Yeah. Um, who won the, the national championship that year. Yeah, the 98 nationals in Chicago. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah, Captain, I, I know a lot of people don't understand the web header wizard rules, and it is interesting. I agree. This is, if you're playing this, you can't place the, an activator, which we'll get into in just a minute, or an any hero. Just like you were placing a card. Actually, before we talk about that, maybe we should talk about placing cards. Can we yeah. skip ahead a little or, sure. or not? I think should so. Because yeah. that's on page 21. No, that's and we're only on page <laughs> 9. That's a lot of jump. All right, let, <laughs> let's jump. Let's see. Um, I think it's imperative for them to know the gameplay and strategically how it works. Sure. Uh, huh. The only thing is I forgot to download that image. <laughs> All right. I will get that image here in just a minute. Um, but placing cards, a lot of people don't do it the way it is in the manual. I don't do it that way. Do you? Oh. Um, no, I think they had them. Did they have them turned sideways? In the yeah, manual? they have them turned sideways. Yeah, no, I do mine vertically up and down. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't like seeing them tucked because they're hard. Yeah, it's, it's easy to overlook them. Right, it's hard to see. Um, where did I... And so, so, for instance, with this Team Overpower, you can place an Any Hero um, to your Team Overpower, and it's just one Any Hero um, or one Activator. You also have the ability on any location now, you can also place the Any Home Base, which most people would refer to as A-Next. Um, that was the only one that was in any character or any hero as far as the aspects are concerned. And if you read the fine print here at Team Overpower, it did kind of allude to some of those details. There we go. This is the image of placing cards in the monumental rule book. So your character's placed there. Um, 
you're turning them sideways, I guess it didn't really block them. You're not seeing much of the picture on the card. Without the picture, sometimes it's hard to tell what's down there. Right. Because we all recognize cards by the image on them, not by the wording. Some, some people know them by the title of the card. Right. But there are so many cards to know now that that would be hard to do. Yeah, and I, I feel like if you place them that way, they're, it kind of blocks out the text, especially if you lay them right on top of each other like that. If you're going to place them that way, I, th I think you should still kind of stagger them where you can see, like, the first, you know, head, the header part. Right. Where you can read the card. Um, Captain says we haven't done the battle structure yet. How many cards do you draw when the battle is over? Important to understand before talking about placing, the fact that you can quit the battle or your opponent might quit. Sure. Yeah. I think we can start with that. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to this. each battle, once you've constructed your deck, um, you each draw eight cards. And then the first thing that you do is you look for events. Um, event is a random card that comes out throughout the deck. Both players can have them in their deck. And the event um, describes something that happens during that battle. To both players. To both players. So, for instance, there could be one that says KO one frontline character. Um, that happens immediately. As soon as you play your event, you draw immediately for your event to replace the event. Um, and if you're whoever has initiative, so if it's the very first hand of the game, whoever either won the coin toss or won rock, paper, scissors, whatever the case may be, um, that person would go with their event first. Um, then the opponent would check their hand for events. If they have an event, then that event would take place next. Um, in the rare chance that you both have the same event, only one of those events is played. You, you do both get the redraw. Well, you went both KO frontline character. Not twice. Wow. I mean, if it comes up the second hand. Sure, but yeah. only once in one hand. Correct. And you redraw for the event. If you draw two events in one hand, you discard one as a duplicate, you choose the one that you want to play, you redraw for that one, Just duplicate you do not get to redraw for. It. Correct, it's like a duplicate power card or special. Yep, and it's gone. And that's very unfortunate, especially if you're playing something like Image Inducer or Shattered Image and you need that, no activators, and unfortunately that's the second event that you draw off, the redraw. So it happened to me the other night against Vlad. I told him Merry Christmas and <laughs> <laughs> proceeded you, to lose. No, I you, lost. He beat you? Yeah, he did. Nah, he's getting too See. good. <laughs> We're going to have to sabotage him or something. <laughs> um, let's just talk real quick about how to choose your characters, your point total. Okay. Uh, that's basically where you start with building your deck. You get four characters. You get 76 points. Uh, we're not going to talk about three stat characters right now. We're only going to discuss the four stat characters. So you get uh, 76 points. You get those points by adding up all four of the icon totals. Um, the, you kind of want your power pack to be playable by all characters to an extent, not exclusively. I, you can have fives and sixes in the deck that only one or two of the characters can play. Um, it makes it a little harder, especially to get in the power pack, which is uh, we discussed last week. If you go through your whole deck, then you it's not game over like most games. You get to reshuffle the power cards, and you have only a deck of power cards at that point. Um, yeah, and so it's very important when you're building a deck that a lot of your grids line up um, with your other characters that you're putting on the team. The only team that can really get away with not doing that would be the Fantastic Four deck, and that's just because they have a special set of rules for their location. If they're using Four Freedoms yes. Plaza. Right. Um, so I guess uh, you really want at least one character with an eight stat. You don't want to go max seven. You certainly don't want max six against competitive play. Uh, if you're having fun just playing around, you can build a max six deck, but you're probably not going to win. So I don't recommend it. Um, your sevens, you can go with one eight and three sevens, and just for fun you can win. Competitive games are a lot tougher because most guys are going to have two eights. That reserve character is going to have an eight to back up if you happen to lose your frontline eight. 
you know, some people choose to go with two eights on the front line and run like a spider woman or a velocity in reserve flash. Right. Um, it, it's tougher, but it's not impossible with just one eight. So, so I kind of had the breakdown. Okay, so the ahead. first thing you do when you, you draw eight cards, as we discussed, the first thing that you do is look for your events. Uh, if there's an event, you redraw for the event. Uh, the next thing that you do is check for duplicates. So if you have any duplicate specials, any duplicate power cards, those all get discarded to the appropriate piles. So if you have a duplicate nine or less for spawn, for instance, you get to keep one of them. The other one goes to the dead pile. If you have duplicate eight power cards, you get to keep one. The other one goes to the power pack. And that's as Doug was mentioning, those get reshuffled later into the game, possibly if you make it to that part of the game. Uh, the next thing you do um, when you're playing is then you start placing. So whoever has initiative, whoever is first, um, they place a card first, then the opponent would get to place their card next. Um, and you go through this cycle until one player says that they're no longer going to place any more cards. Um, then the opponent would still get to place as many cards as they would like. Um, and then at that point, you go to the venture phase of the game. Um, and then this is where you're venturing your missions. So you'll have seven missions. They all had some sort of um, event that was tied to those missions. Um, and there were a few um, events that had any missions. So no matter what mission set you're using, you could use these any mission uh, events throughout the deck. Um, at that point, after you're done venturing, first thing you do is the opponent has the ability to concede if they would like to, or you could concede, and then whoever concedes, the other person, once you draw the next set of eight cards, whoever conceded, that person gets to go next first. He gets to go first in the next battle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Brett says make sure you cover where the reserve place cards count and don't count as duplicates. Uh, I just threw up the uh, layout again for you to look at. The reserve character, anything not playable by that reserve character would not count as a duplicate. But if it's playable from reserve, than anything placed on them is a duplicate. Yeah, so that was a question in the group chat today for overpower. Um, so say you draw a, an eight power card, say it's only playable by your reserve character. As long as you don't have another eight power card in your hand in that battle, you can place it to your reserve. If the reserve cannot play that power card, if you the very next hand, if you draw another eight, um, as long as it's not the one that the reserve could only use, the front line could keep that duplicate eight. It's not considered a dupe because the reserve can't play it. But for instance, there are certain characters that can play power cards from reserve. So if you look, for instance, at Polaris or Velocity, they have inherents that allow them to play power cards from reserve. Um, so if you put a six energy on uh, Velocity and you draw another six energy or six any power in your hand, you would have to discard the one that you draw in your hand because Velocity has the ability to use it in that battle. Right, and once a card is placed to a character, only that character can use it, Correct. whether it's a special, a power card, teamwork, an ally, uh, a universe card. Unless it's a universal card, like spawns one to nine. Yeah, but don't spawn still play in it. Right. So he could play it to defend one of his teammates. Correct. But if an eight placed on spawn, an eight power card placed on spawn cannot be played by Dr. Strange, who's also in the front line, uh, to defend an attack. Correct. Uh, he can only play it. Now. The purpose of placing is to build better hands, right. uh, have more cards for the next battle usually. Uh, sometimes they may sit there for two or three battles before you use them, but you want card advantage. Um, that's huge in this game. Yeah, it's the name of the game. So yeah. the more cards you can place, obviously the more cards you're going to have accessible to you in the, in the following hands. Um, we covered last week what you can place on them, but I'll just briefly recap. It's just one of everything can be placed on any one yeah, character. For the most part. Except for Star Jammers. Or, I, I think they're the only one, right? With the inherent ability, they can have two power cards placed on them. Or Enforcers can have two specials placed to them. Okay. And then a couple heroes have specials that if they get into play can have unlimited yeah. specials placed on them. But Fairchild can place two unique universe cards. 
So she could place an ally or a teamwork or two different teamworks, as long as they're not duplicates. All right, if she can get that card into play. No, nope, that's her inherent. Oh, that's her inherent. Yeah. I thought she had one that... Um, she avoids a teamwork, like confusion yeah. or whatever. But yeah, she, her inherent ability is that she gets to keep du uh, non-duplicate universe cards can be placed to her. Um, but there are characters that have specials that say they can have unlimited specials or yeah. it, whatever. Correct. Yeah, um, so... For I'm instance, just jumping to mine right now. Green Lantern or Green Ho Goblin have one. Hawkeye has it. Hawkeye. Yeah, called uh, I think Quiver of Arrows or something. But yeah. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about locations. Um, oh boy, why did I put locations? I'm not that ain't it. Is that it? I saw Blue there Area the Moon. There you go. There we go. All right. One of your favorite locations. Yep. <laughs> uh, the blue area of the moon. Uh, locations showed up in Monumental. And they added a unique ability to build a deck using any combination of those four characters on your team. Yep, There's an inherent ability that that team gets that are either... Conducive. Uh, or <laughs> yeah, they could be positive or negative. Um, Onslaught Citadel allows that team to only draw seven cards yeah. uh, instead of the typical eight. Uh, the blue area actually has a negative two because their power cards are minus two to venture total when they hit. Uh, it makes it hard because a lot of those characters are energy based. Yeah, so they wanted to make these team based. Um, one advantage you got to using this as a home base or location is that you didn't have to go off of the deck building grids. So for instance, if you're 83 points, you could still play the team as long as it's one of those six characters. Right, right. you're not bound by the 76 point limit. Right. And it still makes it hard to, to build a good team because you're, if you're looking for all, offense, it's not hard. If you're looking for defense, it's very hard. Yeah. Um, I like the blue area of the moon, it's fun to play. Inhumans, Kree, Shi'ar, Jean Grey in reserve, or Inhumans in reserve with Crystal on the front line. You play the KO event. Yeah, I made it nice. Um, it's fun, but that the only time I ever played it in a tournament, the minus two to energy on Venture Total, it just I couldn't win Venture. Yeah, it's hard because your your eight stats are normally energy. Yeah, so Inhumans and, and Jean Grey. You could get away with a little bit with Shi'ar. She was an eight intellect, so. Yeah, it, it made it really hard. I. I think I went two and two in that event and didn't qualify to move on to the single LM. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Glad you're almost finished moving. Um, so every location has six characters on it that you can choose from, and it does make it a lot more fun because you can, like I said, go past the 76 points. Um, but it doesn't mean you're going to be real competitive. <laughs> yeah, typically the only competitive home base was a four freedoms plaza right just because they had such a unique inherent net where they could place a power card here and then as long as they shifted and blocked defended the other attack as long as they use that power card they could shift all over the place yeah i think it captured the essence of the fantastic four it did yeah it definitely made it overpowered yeah especially the way they had it initially set up where you could defend with the specials as well not just the power cards yeah so I, yeah it, and, it got a pretty quick errata yeah because four freedoms was just winning everything and it just came down to who drew the avoids right um hey larry why are you pretending to be sandy <laughs> <laughs> so um the the locations are fun but they are mostly used as battle sites uh, also announced during monumental right. and the battle site works like you could have specials in your battle site for any of the characters on this location you could only have one one per deck so you can't have one for each character that's listed on the location just one for the team uh, some of these battle sites could get pretty defensive and offensive at the same time. Uh, the one that's most used has got to be Onslaught Citadel. Uh, it can do a lot of crazy things. 
<laughs> uh, I'm going to download it, but if you want to go ahead and talk about sure. that. Sure. So that the other job. unique feature to um, battle sites, as Doug mentioned, you only got the 1-1 one, one per deck um, for one of the heroes. You also could only take one of the codes for each particular character. So in this case, say Jean Grey has a avoid one attack, which is an AG code. Quicksilver also has that same code. You cannot run two straight avoids into the battle site. And so you really had to look through different battle sites to see what the diversity would be um, on those particular sites. And as Doug mentioned, some of the more prevalent ones that are used would be Onslaught Citadel, Age of Apocalypse, uh, Phil Keffer and Marcel have recently been using Muir Island. Um, some of the other ones that might be used a little bit would be Danger Room, things of that nature. So they just had a lot of versatility to them. Um, you could get a negate, you could get a, a void, you could get a teammate avoid, discard a place card, lockouts, things of that nature. So you wanted to find something that had you know, a lot of diverse cards to it. <laughs> um. Captain says, I was a little confused about what a fudge card was. Sounds uh, About a what? A fudge card. Fudge card. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I don't, I don't know that. Oh, oh, Larry's posted a trivia question. Okay. Uh, um, there are three cards with the word Mandarin. First one that has all three wins a $15 fudge card. Oh, okay. Larry Maybe. must be hungry. <laughs> I don't know if it's a gift card or you win a gift card to fudge only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Daniel says, I did not know about the pre-placed power cards on the reserve, not duping. Yeah, if it's not playable from reserve, it's not considered a dupe. Yeah, but for instance, there are some events that would bring your reserve character to the front line for a battle. If that happens and you do have a level 8 energy, for instance, if you draw another 8 in that hand that you draw that event, you do have to discard the one in your hand. Yeah. The one in the one that's placed takes precedence over the one you draw. Now, if you have one placed on a frontline character and the event comes up, switch one frontline character with the reserve, and you bring up that serve with reserve with an eight power card on it, then it's not considered a dupe. Correct. And both characters could have that eight power card, and both could be played that hand. Right. So. <laughs> It's, you're still taking a chance when you place it on that reserve character, mm -hmm. um, even if you're running that event because you don't know that you'll get the event in time. Right. And you're also making yourself down a card when you place it on that reserve character. Yeah, you're giving up card advantage to your opponent by you know, placing a card to your reserve that's not playable immediately. Yeah. So it, it rarely happens. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Right. I just threw up on slot Citadel there. <laughs> they may only draw seven cards during the draw phase. It is a powerful team, uh, but it doesn't have a character playing cards from reserve. Right. The other thing is, is you could made the team without, with being in the point limit, if you if you chose four of the characters, you know. You know, I I think I'd forgotten that. Yeah. I mean, there's some characters on here that you can't do that, but for instance, if you did onslaught, you could put X Men and Holocaust on it with a 19 point reserve like Dark Beast, and it's legal anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it really didn't have any type of advantage unless you really wanted to go crazy and, you know, play the onslaught with the Sentinels and the Dark Beast. And If you wanted a theme team, it's pretty nice. Right. Which locations do make for fun theme teams. If you have an event where everyone has to play a location, you're going to get a little more variety. Right. Um, and variety is always more fun because you're not playing the meta or the, the current decks that are dominating the competitive scene yeah the only advantage to possibly drawing seven cards is you won't dupe as often but it never seems to work i've tried it before <laughs> just to see how i do you dupe normal as really well. the person the drawing eight. yeah yeah um so you always seem to be down a card i always thought that you could put pen particles in play and then you could choose your own draw but there's an errata on that that you still draw one less than whatever you select <laughs> so if oh you, really you know, they're so if you say 10, you only get to draw 9. The opponent gets to draw 10. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Captain says, if you draw two 8s at the same time, can you place one on the reserve character and keep the other in your hand? No, you may no, not. No, you're not. Because the discard dupe phase happens before the placing phase. Right. So you have to get rid of one. 
Yep. So again, you draw your eight cards, you check for events, you check for duplicates, and then you go to the placing phase. Um, and then after the placing phase is over, you go to the venturing phase, and then you have the option to concede or continue to battle. All right. Uh, the player going first has the opportunity to concede first. If he decides he's playing, then the second uh, player has a choice to stay or concede at that time. Right. Um, the captain says if you have an eight placed on the front line when you draw your next hand, if you draw another eight, can you place it to the reserve instead of discarding? Again, nope, because the discard phase happens before the placing phase. Right. So it is a dupe when you draw it and you cannot save it to place on the reserve. Yeah, the only way I know you can keep it is if you draw an event that says do not discard any duplicates this battle. Um, but you, at that point, you still probably wouldn't want to place it on your reserve because you can obviously attack with both of them or defend with both of them right. in that and, battle. Unless you think your opponent's <laughs> going to run. Yeah. Um, but uh, it doesn't happen often. If you had one placed and it wasn't usable by the reserve character, then it wouldn't count as a dupe. Correct. Yeah. It would have to be usable by them, just not playable. They'd still have to be able to use it. Yeah. Right. Playable um, is uh, more the word than usable. Right. It could be usable but not playable, so you wouldn't have to discard it. So I don't know if they came up with battle sites because they added the IQ and they didn't want to make those cards useless for the first three sets that didn't have all four stats yeah i've kind of always thought of it as you know it's like in the comic books um you'll see an appearance by the thing or by onslaught so it was just a way to get more characters involved in the game that weren't actually on your um deck building um, but <laughs> i do remember I, it might be in this rule book somewhere too i'm not sure uh that your Old, uh, your old hero cards are not useless now. Right. You can use them for a battle site. Yeah, that helps too. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it kind of made them like guest stars into, right. the, into the game. Uh, we're going to briefly describe how to use the activators and how to build a battle site. It is probably the thing that m people get wrong the most. Yeah, especially in, it's not very well detailed in the uh, rule books. Um, and and miscoded cards make it uh, more hard difficult. sometimes, <laughs> yeah, to know what you can and cannot put under the battle site. So technically, I think there's only two rules. N only one one per deck and no duplicate codes. Right. Unfortunately, as Doug mentioned, some of the cards are miscoded. So, for instance, a regular avoid will say AG, but some of the old teammate avoids would also be coded AG. Um, they have recoded those teammate avoids to be an AD, as in... Um, alpha and Delta. Um, and so you could theoretically have two cards in your battle site that say AG, where as one of them is really not going to be the AG. Yeah. Um, when you draw an activator, well, an activator would be any hero card. You have to put in your deck one hero card for every card that you have in that battle site of that character. So let's uh, let me put Onslaught back up here. Yeah, so if you if you have 15 specials under your battle site that you've built, you have to have 15 uh, unique activators. So if there's three onslaughts, you have to have exactly three onslaught specials um, built underneath that battle site. An, an activator is a hero card that corresponds with the card that's in the battle site. So it, like you said, uh, three onslaught specials are in the battle site. You have to have three onslaught specials in the deck. The only exception. exception to this is the Beyonder <laughs> card. Right. You could have 15 cards in the battle site and 16 activators because Beyonder and Beyonder uh, can go get any card in the battle site except the one per deck. Yeah, so think of Beyonder as like a wild card. Definitely. And Josh, I agree with you. It is very innovative, and there's nothing like it in any other game. Yeah, it was. I think it was really the most unique concept to the game. Outside of venturing, maybe. I think uh, even more so. You think so? Yeah. yeah. It, it does make it a lot more complicated, but it also takes levels. It adds to the level skill level. That's cool. Hey, Ricky. Checking in from snowboarding in New Hampshire. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Watching from the beginning at double speed. 
Happy 311 day? Not sure what 311 day means. But. I don't know. Sorry, Ricky. <laughs> you got me on that one. But I'm glad you're tuning in. Um, the battle sites can be incredibly fun to build. Uh, you can put a lot of tricks and gimmicks in your battle site. Um, the biggest one that I like to do, as most of you know, is <laughs> power mimicked. Uh, you can play a morph. You draw that morph activator, you're gonna get the power mimic and that card becomes any card that's on the table, whether it's in play or placed or on permanent record. And it's a lot of fun uh, when you surprise somebody by making your power mimic their draw three and you get to draw three cards. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that the power mimic can do. Uh, it can avoid one attack, may not be attacked for a remainder battle. It can be a power leech. It, it can, yeah. yeah, and it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, that's why I like Age of Apocalypse. It's the only uh, battle site morph song, correct? Yep, that's it. So that's the only one I ever play. <laughs> um, Onslaught Citadel is it's probably a little bit better. It just doesn't have the gimmick as far as that goes. Right. It, that doesn't mean it doesn't have nice gimmicks. Yeah, it's got three different unique gimmicks of its own. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think the reason that the Citadel is slightly better is... For, um, the Age of Apocalypse, unfortunately, didn't get that six character. It never um, got into gameplay. That oh, was blank. Yeah, there was a blank character that was right. supposed to be made that, you know, you can't put those cards in there because she wasn't printed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you, the Onslaught Citadel has three different tricks that most people will try to u utilize more than anything. Um, Holocaust has... Um, you can take as many hits on one character as long as that character doesn't die. You can try to tuck those hits into the permanent record, and it affects the venture total. All right. So if you have 19 points out there and you pull all those in, um, there's yeah, a good chance you that your character is or your opponent is not going to be winning that venture. Right. And then post has the exact opposite. Right. So, so you can suck them in one hand and pull them out the next. Yeah. So on your opponent. Right. So if you've you know, got 14 points on your opponent. They went into the permanent record um, in one battle. Um, in a later battle, you can choose to pull those 14 points out from your opponent, and it affects venture total again. So it's like you hit them all over with those hits. Now, both of those are considered attack on a character, not opponent, right? Just the post one is. The post is opponent? Is no. a target character. Target. The Holocaust. The Holocaust is, is an is attack because you're doing it on your own character. Right. Um, the Holocaust card can only be negated. Correct. If I'm playing that, my opponent has the opportunity to negate it, but there's no defense outside of that against it. Yeah, it's the only card. The postcard is played as a target, so it can be negated, avoided, defended any way that a normal yeah. attack would be. Uh, and then the best card. Yeah, the best card is probably... Cannon fodder. Cannon fodder? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I think the best card is probably the Merciless Conqueror. Yeah. Um, so what that does is, again, it's similar to the holocaust card as you're taking hits on a certain character you can choose to um, ko your own character and those hit points go away and your character goes away yeah. that one's really effective because if you only have one other character on the front line a lot of times then you can get lockouts in place and so you've got rid of vigor points and now your opponent can't attack you <laughs> yeah you can it's avoid like, one attack but not be attacked for remainder battle or even if you can lock out two of your characters and kill the third one yeah. uh, protect two of the players that, or characters so they can't be attacked and then you're they're putting all their attacks on one of your characters and then you play uh, merciless conqueror and you say well i'm going to ko my own character and all your venture points go away. Yeah, that's what makes that site so unique is yep. it has two different characters in here that have avoid one attack and can't be attacked for the battle. You can right. choose to use that through X-Man or most common people play it through post, um, yeah. which is protective plates. Yeah. Um, so, so it has kind of everything that you want to do. It's got three different ways to get up to 19 points in, in any particular battle. And sometimes you can get more than that in one battle. You could tuck 19 points. You could take 19 points of damage on one of your characters and then KO them. Um, you could pull out 19 points on your opponent. So. Yeah. <laughs> and when yeah. players started playing that, that that's the Cincinnati guys. Uh, they brought it up to Columbus, and they just trounced us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You're KOing your own character? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, it did 
it took the whole world by surprise, and then they paired that with uh, Marauders. Yeah, that and was get Vertigo in play, and they could just put the hits wherever they wanted. Yeah, they could spread them out anywhere they wanted with Vertigo when it was played defensively. Yep. Shift them all over the place and either tuck and KO, and it was it was just ultra cheese at that point. Yeah, and they put all the power card <laughs> hits on their X babies, and you couldn't knock out their X babies right. and unless they wanted to. Then they could merciless conquer with all kind of venture points on the X babies. So uh, the onslaught citadel is amazing, but AOA's got a lot of good stuff. Age of Apocalypse with Shadow Cat. It does. Yep. Shadow Cat's got some great, and you want to. <laughs> You had an Origins event. I did. Uh, playing a Shadow Cat. That was so funny. <laughs> that guy adds up all the venture points and says, well, I think I just won the game. Unless you got a 10 in your hand. And you said, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> and you played the Soul Sword. <laughs> and he couldn't defend it because he had no cards. Yep. And you won the venture by one. And that was glorious. Uh, oh, my gosh. The chat's blowing up here. Um, Oh, they're asking, what is the best offensive sites? Um, well, AOA is pretty offensive with Power Mimic, can be. Yeah, two, two make two, two additionals, 210, uh, X-Man 4 multi, X-Man 7. Um, it just depends what you need. I'm, the Danger Room's pretty offensive, but it does have a good array of uh, defense as well. But a lot of those attacks are bigger. You got a 2 8 from Gambit. You got an 8 any power from Gambit. A Gambit. You got a 6 that's minus 4 from Angel. Um, you got a Rogue 4 combine if you want. A couple of different 6s from Iceman uh, that you can choose. So. But the sad fact is most people don't play a battle site for, def uh, for offense. Yeah, it's, it's more of a, well, I wouldn't say solely, but yeah, it's more of for defense, I would say. Well, that's when you're, you're building it around the, the defense. Right. And the offense just comes along. Yeah. Um, when I build one, I try to have an offensive and a defensive card for yeah. each character. I think that's what most people try to do. Yeah. One coded card for defense, one for offense. Um, Although the morph has two attacks and a power mimic in my battle site. The six and the six strength attack and then the yeah. two fighting mimic, two additional attacks. Yeah. One big fist. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would say a really good offensive... Uh, site would be something like Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, it's got a hand eight, a six that you can use for defense or to attack, similar to the Shadow Cat six. Um, it's got Ghost Rider um, enforcers. It, it's it's pretty offensive, but it's got a good mix of defense as well in that one. Uh, Josh says he's. I've been using Outback most often mm -hmm. for defense. Yeah, uh, it does have a lot. Um, Onslaught mm -hmm. Citadel has a lot. AOA has a lot. Danger Room is pretty defensive. Mm -hmm. um, Mer Island, is there a lot of defense in there, or are they mostly going for offense? Uh, it's It's got a decent mix of both. Um, they're trying to avoid specials and draw cards mainly, or lock out your specials with Professor X. Um, but it does have a Banshee Avoid or Shadow Cat Avoid. But it has the 210. It's, yeah. Banshee has a 5 make an additional, a 4 make an additional. Um, so it's got a decent mix of offense with it. Right. Um, Ricky says it's the greatest day of the year. Go listen to 311. <laughs> is 311 a band? I don't know. Captain says, not my kind of music. I'm into heavy metal and prog rock. So maybe 311 something to do with country music? I, I don't no, know. I don't know what Nobody that is. Nobody wants to tell me. <laughs> Captain says, happy 316 in advance to all my fellow pro wrestling fans. Not sure. Stone I, that must Cold. be Stone Cold Steve Austin or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doug Taylor says Mar Island is solid defensively. I like John 316 a little better. <laughs> Not Austin 316. Yeah, Austin. <laughs> um, all right, so that's basically the activators. Uh, onslaughts, so, uh, the the battle site. Uh, battle sites really add a next next level yeah. uh, strategies. It is hard to learn because you got to get used to when you draw an activator. Again, activators are just like any other card. You discard dupes. I wonder uh, if I should go grab a battle site and just break it down. Do you want to break? Uh, maybe next week. Next week? Yeah, we'll break down yeah. a battle site next week. Uh, this definitely, I mean, we're not even halfway through this stupid <laughs> manual. <laughs> I got activators. <laughs> All right. So we talked a little bit. About, actually, we skipped ahead a few times. We'll, we'll be okay. Um, yeah, we're doing fine. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. Uh, we talked about building the deck. 
most card, unless the card says that it's one per deck, you can have as many of them in the deck as you want. Um, most of them you're going to want to have one, two, or three, and that is because you don't want to be duping on them. If you yeah. draw a duplicate and you got to discard it, it's not much fun to play an opponent who's not discarding cards, and you are. Yeah, to build the most effective, like, streamlined deck, you're only typically running 56 cards. You're definitely going to have multiples of your power cards and some of your better specials. So when you do that, you probably only are going to have, like, 25 to 30 unique cards that will not be duplicates. So you got to be careful putting too many of one card in there. Yeah, Michael's checking out. Hey, Michael, thanks, man. We'll see you next week. Bye, Mike. Um, I think most... Guys that run a JW deck run three of the JWs. The JW is the card that the attack cannot be defended by a special, can only be defended by a power card. Yep. And they make one additional follow up power card attack that can only be defended with a power card. Yeah, and it's so unique from Heroes for Hire just because they're an eight grid, which, you know, the seven cannot defend the follow up to the second part of the JW. Yeah. Um, so similar to the avoids like Spawn's Nine or Less or Spider Woman's Nine or Lesses, there's typically three of them in the deck. Um, if you got a little bit bigger deck, maybe try to get away with a fourth in the gate, something like that. But oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I used to do it with any heroes before they came out with the new Merlin because the Bastion's not near as effective. Yeah, you can't place it at that point. Um, power cards in your deck. Normally run three sixes, three sevens, three eights. Yeah, some people run three fives, three fours, and there's some people that do that. But usually fives and fours on the two. Yeah. Sometimes three on the fives. I don't think I've ever run three fours. Maybe in the teamwork deck in Boston, I might have had three fours. Yeah, it's not my flavor. <laughs> yeah, uh, one one, one two. Yeah, or none. Two threes. <laughs> or none. Yeah. Sometimes I don't run a one or a two. Just depending if, if it's a deck I'm trying to get big specials out quick or if I have draw mechanics, I don't want to be drawing a one or two. You don't, and you don't want to be duping on it. Yeah, I never would put two. And that's why you only run one. Right. Some people run two of those as well, which uh, every time I see it, I'm doing a happy dance and <laughs> <sound. laughs> Who was it that ran um, the event? Oh, it was Vlad. Power, level one power cards cannot be blocked this battle with the event. Yeah. And so he would try to get you, but... Yeah, the only the only deck maybe that you would try to have a bunch of twos in, if they were unique twos, would be the Vault, just because of remember they're inherent. You can have different duplicate level twos, um, so as many as you wanted. But the problem with that is you don't you're not generating a whole lot of entry points. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, teamworks. Teamwork duplication is your to use stat not your bonuses so any card that is a six intellect to use will duplicate another six intellect to use will not duplicate a six strength just the six to use the seven to use the eight to use so it doesn't matter what your bonuses are right um basic universe cards are the same way it's your to use stat um, allies, same same way. Yeah, as long as you, so if you have a 5-3 strength and a 5-3 fighting on allies, they are not considered duplicates. Yeah, so again, your power cards, you don't want to go without any, but you don't want to have too many. Right. Uh, if you go through your deck and you get in the power pack, you're going to want to be as balanced as you can. Yeah, uh, I think most people run somewhere between 17 to... 21 power cards. Yeah. And if you get in your power, when I get my power pack and I draw a one or a two, I sometimes place them because I know I'm not going to dupe on it the next hand because yeah. I'm not running two of those. If you're relying more on teamwork universe cards, that's generally when you beef up your power cards a little bit because right. you need them to fuel the teamwork. Um, I'm, wow, we just. And did oh. you guys cover that if you do have a teamwork, you do have to follow it up with a power card? You can't just throw the teamwork by itself as a single attack there has to be a follow-up to it i think we did cover that last week because we were talking about it at first we used to just those sixes <laughs> yeah. and it was like oh that's a yeah, six. very good yeah. Yeah. Uh, i don't like that teamwork rule uh, that you have to have a teammate which is also become it becomes unusable if you only have one character 
Because you except, have nobody to make the follow up attack. Except, except for multiple man. He <laughs> make his own follow ups. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, let me go back here. Oh, they're trying to figure out Larry's trivia question. A couple of them are. Two of the Mandarin cars trying to hunt down a third. They can't find it. Um, I don't know. 311 must be a band. As Ricky says, try listening to their songs too late, stainless, one and the same. All right, Ricky. Never heard of him. <laughs> uh, Brett says he's stuck. He can't come up with a third one either. Who did they get so far? Uh, they didn't mention who. They just said they found two. Oh, okay. Josh says, I've been wondering why not run four eights. You can, but you're not going to have a negate. You mean four eight characters or eight. four eight power cards? Oh, that's uh, oh, it does say eight. Okay, I thought he meant four eight characters. If you do, you still have three. Um, if you only have three and you do, you have two. Right. Um, you could run four eights, but some people do if they're running three different eight characters on their on their deck. My teamwork deck did have four eights. Four sevens, I four sixes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fighting energy, strength, and then any power. Or not. And you just had, I didn't have energy. Right. That's strength, intellect, fighting, and, and any, any power. power. Yeah. So it, I won't say it never happens, but again, you just got to decrease the odds on Goopy. Yeah. And if you do. Hey, John, thanks for tuning in. I was going to say, if you do play a deck like that, if I draw the first eight, I never place it just because I know that three more are coming up, yeah. you know, somewhat quickly. Right. Yeah, Josh, sorry. Yeah, I see power cards now. Uh, my brother focused on collecting Marvel. I focused on collecting DC and Image when it came to overpower. So I just looked up my best. Oh, <laughs> he's checking the trivia. Um, let's see. Uh, if it's on the back of the old mission cards. I don't know. I honestly didn't read the trivia question too well tonight to know what. Something to do with there are three different cards with the name Mandarin in it. The name Mandarin. Okay. I know one for sure right off the top of my head. But. It's probably one of them that they got too. You only got one. Yeah. What one did you get? <laughs> uh, Psylocke has a four multi that's Lady Mandarin. Lady and Okay. So she's in like a battle suit or something, I think. All right. Um, activators also uh, have the same duplicate role. So if you're running three or four activators for one character and you dupe on them in the hand, one of them's got to go. <laughs> uh, John says a lot of decks run four eights and only one or two ones. Yep. Or only one one and one two. Or none. Um, <laughs> hey, we're moving right along. Where to discard uh, on our map we showed you uh, the layout so you can see your discards are going to go into the dead pile which is in the upper left corner your power card dupes will go into the power pack your dead characters pile nothing there's what else would go in the dead characters pile? Just the heroes right? The heroes your events or any and events, any, and any, any card that gets removed from the game or any oh. battle site card that you've played. The battle site activators are supposed to Not, not oh, the, the activators, but the cards the that are played. Yeah. Right. So if you have a Gambit charm, you play it, it goes into the actually dead pile. It's removed from the game. You can no longer use that card. And, and I, the, the layout of the game, as you can see on the screen, is set up there. And for some reason, most people don't go by it. <laughs> um, I've seen people do all kinds of things with their cards that they played out of the battle site. They yeah, lay them on top, on top of the battle site. Yeah. Some of them flip uh, up them the other way. Yeah, flip them the other way. I don't particularly care for either of those ways. Yeah, so if you if you go and watch some of the videos um, on the live stream, you'll see that Phil Keffer and Tyler do a very good job of actually taking it and removing it from the game. A lot of players you'll see just lay it face down or face up underneath the battle site or something to that effect, but they actually do go into the uh, defeated characters pile once you've played an activator or special. I like to keep mine separate, and I play some face up. I don't know. Technically, are you allowed to go back through there and see what ones you've played, or are you only supposed to go into the battle site to look to see yeah, what's still there? Yeah, I think you there? go through and see what's there. So I guess it doesn't really matter either way. You're gonna know, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> I 
for some reason, I always put my missions on the left side and all those dead piles are on my right side. Yeah, I think that's because most players are right-handed. Uh, yeah. So they just automatically want to pick up right. from and their right hand. I don't ever put my home base behind my reserve character, which Vlad yelled at me about. So <laughs> I need to learn to do that. I don't do it because a lot of times I'm playing placing specials on my reserve character. I think initially the game was made where they didn't want cards being played from that reserve character. And so it made sense to put the other card right behind it because, you know, there weren't a bunch of cards sitting on the reserve. But now that you've got Silver Sable who can play a teamwork from reserve and a special from reserve, it gets very tricky to see all the cards that are placed on your and opponent's Hawkeye side. And Hawkeye can have quite a few yeah. cards placed on him in reserve. Uh, I liked it better when the reserve character didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spider-Woman went and ruined that. Yep. I guess Hawkeye too in the mission control, but... It was more very unique when Hawkeye had it. Yeah. And, and it was a 2-8, but like I said, as they kept integrating it, it got, <laughs> yeah. got worse and worse. The, the reserve character now is not a reserve character. Right. It, it's just a guy hiding out, hanging out in the back, or yeah. a girl hanging out in the back, a lady. <laughs> Andrew says, are you allowed to peek at your own dead pile power pack battle site? That you are not. The battle site you are, the dead pile and the power pack you're not allowed to go through, unless you have a card that allows you to do that. So, for instance, the web-headed wizard would allow you to go into your dead pile and, and grab one card, yep, as long Andrew, as it's not you another enemy here. remember what you've already played. Yep, so that's a, good, that's a good part. The better players obviously remember just about every card that they've played and every card their opponents played. Um, yeah, the, the better your memory, the better you'll do in the game. There's just so much to remember. Uh, the battle site at any time. I don't, technically in the rules, I'd have to look on this one. But are you allowed to look at your battle site even if you don't have any activators left in your hand? Uh, it, that, that very questionable. Yeah. I know a lot of people used to use that as a stall tactic, which if you don't have an activator, there's no reason you should be looking through your battle site. It's also yeah. a bluff tactic. Make your opponent think you think have you an, got activator. an activator. Right. Um, so, no, I don't think you should be able to do it if you don't have an activator, but... I don't know that there's technically a ruling on that. Yeah, I'll dash Joe or Dave. They'll know that one. I think that's something probably new that's going to come out in their new rule book. We should be getting a new rule book soon. Um, I, actually, I'm kind of surprised they haven't released that yet. I wonder what they're waiting on that. There's got to be a reason. I believe it's written, but yeah. what do I know? That, that's probably a good stopping point for tonight. I think we should probably open it up for like 10 minutes of a Q&A. You want to ask some questions? Yeah, just have so some we've, questions fired off and see if we can help you guys. I think, all right, so we'll start with Venture next week. I'll, I'll do my best to get that scanned this week. All right, so what do you guys think? I know some of the guys are still trying to figure out the trivia question. <laughs> I, I think Larry bailed on us. He dropped the bomb of the question and left. He's probably using the fudge gift card for himself. He didn't really want to give it away. He wants all the fudge. There probably was really only two, and he said there was a third. <laughs> Looking for an um, Easter egg, it's not there. <laughs> yeah, Brett said he checked the morals and MOE and the missions, and he hasn't found a third one. What did you find, Brett? Um, but, you know, Larry was wrong last week on his trivia question. Oh, really? <laughs> wrong on his own trivia? <laughs> I can't remember what it was now, but... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there. I know for sure there's Psylocke that's Lady Mandarin. Well, um, it shouldn't be that hard. Just go to Larry's site and type in Mandarin. Oh, you don't think it'll just pull up the Mandarin? Well, it should pull up everything. Yeah, because there's Lady Mandarin. Yeah, there's Lady Mandarin. Um, unless it's an MOE. Um, um, I could find that out. I don't even see a second one. What? No. Um, hey, guys, Larry's got a set of Mandarin cards specials available for $7.84, but it only has one left. Let's see. That's actually a pretty good price for that set. Uh, you should buy it. Oh, there's one. To, Is oh, there something called Mandarin Void or something like that? Or? Uh, all I see is a lady Mandarin. Mandarin Void? I thought maybe something like that from Mandarin. Uh, no, I'm not seeing no. one. Oh, Energy Void. Energy Void. Okay. Energy Void. So I'm a 
pull up uh, this one. Look at all the Mandarin specials. None of his have. No, I don't think any of his would. Hmm. Master technician, mind control, vortex speed. All right, Larry, you stumped us all. We can't even cheat by going to your site. <laughs> I wonder if it's MOE. No, nope, I just looked through MOE. Don't see anything named Mandarin. The only thing I see is Lady Mandarin. Yeah, I knew that one for sure. Unless he's counting Madripoor, which has him listed on the battle site, but that's not really a card name. No. Um, <laughs> maybe that's why he used Sandy's yeah. Facebook Yeah, doesn't want anybody coming after him. I <laughs> <laughs> could blame her for being wrong. Um, he's got the Mandarin set, two characters and eight specials. Oh, he's got two characters and 18 specials for $11.64. Yeah. Mandarin's playable now with MOE. As a frontline character? Yeah. He's got the uh, he's got the cannon fodder, so he can shift all his attacks to somebody. And so then his teammate avoid becomes viable. Oh, I he's, like it. He's got Ghost Rider's AI, which is opponent, discard one place card, which is very good. Is that out of MOE? No, nope, that's, that's out of his one? normal power surge. Yeah. So if, yeah, if you look at the IQ card, um, no, not the IQ, sorry, the power surge one. Look at the power surge. Why can't I pop this thing up? Well, that's weird. There's the one that makes you discard to disintegrate. disintegrate. Yeah. And then he has this oh, one right yeah. here. Draw one card. Yep, yeah, not that one. That's not very good. Uh, one over from that. Draw one card to your right. Right there. All attacks. Now made on teammate. Yep. So then his nine or less becomes viable. He's got a six strength, which is pretty off suit. Um, I like his inherent a lot. He gets plus two to his fighting power grid um, for defense. And so my thought was always to bump him up with super soldier serum. And now he can block up to a nine with a seven power card. Um, he got essentially a penance there out of um, the MOE. Okay. And then he also got put one card in play. Once the card's in play, then it can avoid any teamwork. It stays in play until you use it. Stars and garters? It's essentially a stars and garters for teamworks only. Okay. So, yeah, it's, he's pretty good. Um, let's see. The problem is he's a 19 energy, and there's just so many good energy characters. Uh, Daniel says he only came up with Psylocke's Lady Mandarin and the Madripoor, Madripoor location. Okay. Oh, last week was the Protect Teammate. Um, Protect uh -oh. Teammate. Oh, that's uh, probably Thor. And... Yeah, I think he was, uh, uh, I don't remember. He, th he thought invisible it was Invisible Woman. woman. And, yeah. Yeah, hers is uh, it's, Invisible Wall or whatever it's called. Uh, Protective perhaps. Wall. Yeah, Brett says he's only come up with Lady Mandarin and yeah. the location. Well, uh, Captain says checking the specials under the location just to stall or trick your opponent into thinking you have an activator seems super dirty. Yeah, yeah. That um, doesn't seem like it's something yeah. you should be doing. Right. Like I said, more for the time frame, especially during Swiss format when the games are timed. I <laughs> thought these were friendly tournaments, says the Captain. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, there can well, be some friendly tournaments. but <laughs> It's a thin line, buddy. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen success with a larger than normal deck? Mm -hmm. Dave McMillan usually runs a large deck, and he does fairly well. Yeah, he runs anywhere between 75 to 80 cards. And Ricky does okay with his Jubilee deck. Or um, Iron Man deck. What's that? Or his Radar Warning and Iron radar. Man deck. Yeah. yeah both uh, the same premise, where you got Beyonder with holding duplicate avoids from the Inherent. So you can, there are exceptions to every rule. Uh, <laughs> and Daniel says he cannot find a third. And Josh says, Larry is the king with the riddle we cannot solve. Uh, Captain says, yes. I normally. So the three cards are Iron Man's, or uh, Mandarin's IQ card, his power surge card, and Lady Mandarin. <laughs> uh, Captain <laughs> says, I normally think establishing rules about checking his cards wouldn't be needed, but if people are playing that underhanded in these tournaments, I agree to having such rules. Uh, oh, yeah, Brett says he also couldn't find it on events, power cards, teamworks, missions, or BU. What's BU? Uh, I think BU is a, car a coded card net. Um, <laughs> Captain said Madripoor and the Lady Mandarin is the only one he found. Check the story text on events as well. 
<laughs> Captain says, what's BU? Ricky says, I made a top eight in Boston last year with a 94-card deck, and it should have won that game at least two, but misplayed after venturing for the win. Is that where he messed up against uh, Marcel? Yeah. He had acrobatics in place. That was in, in the place. top eight? It was in the first round of single limb, yeah. Oh. They played twice there in Boston. Uh, okay. And, and Ricky misplayed both times against Marcel? Well, at least one for sure. The, the single limb for sure. He uh, he had Marcel. Marcel hardly had – maybe Marcel had two or three cards. He locks out his oh. ex-babies with acrobatics. And Marcel – Went to negate it? He negated it offensively because it was the only play he had, only chance he had to win. And Ricky had a negate in his hand, and he didn't negate the acrobatics. He didn't negate the negate. He, he didn't know you could. Oh, Rick. Yeah, I bet Ricky knows now. I bet he does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he would have been able to force the other two attacks from Marcel to go to beyond or Julie, which he had a voids for. Mm-hmm. And Marcel had an 11, and the hand's 8. And got 19 points of venture that he wouldn't have got. Oh, wow. All right, BU stands for Basic Universe. No. Oh. All right. Josh says, I'll counter a bit. I think it's fine to look through any of your own piles except the draw pile. Um, no, it's a rule that you can definitely not look through the dead pile unless you have a special that allows you to do so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of kind of against it. Uh, think you should? I No, I don't think you should be able to go back through that. Yeah. I, yeah, because it would, it would give you information on certain cards that you'd want to place. Right. And so, making your opponent think you have an activator in your hand when you don't and you're picking up your battle site to look, I think that's kind of shady. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's definitely I would never a, do that against anybody except maybe Vlad. That's definitely a fine line. I, I don't think that should be allowed. But I don't think there's a rule. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a written rule right now. Uh, is there a Mandarin's Ring artifact? No. No. That would be cool. Although I agree that shifting through your site without holding an activator is a questionable thing, says Josh. It is. Um, Ricky says, first game during Swiss against Marcel. Marcel had three draw threes and still came down to the last card for him to win. Wow. Yeah, I think Ricky had the event in play that no teamwork could be played or something. and He didn't have a whole lot of cards to try to get through. Marcel keep drawing team works with those draw threes well no i think he had one place and he might have drawn one but um he just didn't get a lot of venture juice one was ricky didn't have any attacks left and he drew a so he had a silver sable avoid in his hand uh, so it wasn't it wasn't playable got it um captain says daniel just checked and i and didn't see one. Oh, he's answering daniel's question no there is no mandarin ring artifact the artifacts are cool they're just hard to get into play. Yeah. Even with uh, Odin's Vault. Uh, I always, even when I discarded the card and I picked up the artifact, I didn't want to play it once it was in my hand because there was no venture attached to it. Yeah, I think the artifact needed to have the ability to replace that card once you put it in play. So you play an artifact, you get to draw one card to replace yeah. it. Then it would have been I, easily done to enhance your characters. I don't know. Some people are anxious to draw cards during a hand. <laughs> I'm not, because yeah. I don't want to draw a dupe. I don't want to draw an event. Yep, uh, can happen. Can, yeah, you're at the mercy of, you know, the top card for sure. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to do it. Yeah. Uh, so and It's different when you're drawing three or four. You, yeah. you take the chance. But, right. But I seem to do pretty well with my Iron Man decks, avoiding the card and drawing. Yeah, it always works against me. <laughs> I think the timing... Knowing what you've played and what you've got placed, knowing, you know, the odds of what you're going to draw. Right. And if you draw that event, it's like, oh, well, yeah. you know, what are the odds? It, it happens. Right. Brett says, I learned that not placing the artifact is bad because I drew my <laughs> artifact just from Odin's Vault and my opponent conceded. Right. Yes. Yeah, you got to place Absolutely. it Absolutely, you have to place it. Um, but I don't like to play it. Hopefully, Sandy, a.k.a. Reverend, will come back and clue us in on the mystery. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't believe he bailed like that. Must have had something pretty important going on. Yeah. I don't know what it could be. Huh. Got me stumped. <laughs> Let me check my messages. I got some Facebook messages, but I'm not seeing one from him. 
So, all right. Uh huh. Uh, he must have done a pretty good job. There didn't seem to be a ton of questions. Yeah. Um, wow, look at that. We hit 41 views. 13 still with us. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, tuning in. We will continue this again uh, next week. So I guess I'll have to send somebody a $15 uh, fudge card. This doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, um, this overpowered group really loves their fudge. <laughs> Maybe we'll um, come up with some kind of superhero fudge cake or something. Um, but I'll get a hold of Larry, and I'll try and figure out what's going on with that, why he bailed without having an answer. He should have at least messaged me the answer. Maybe he's still looking. Yeah. He, <laughs> he said, I told him there were three. There's got to be a third. Not two weeks in a row. Uh, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Next week we will continue this. Uh, we're going to try and wrap it up next week. Uh, AJ might be back to help again. He was a great guest last week. Maybe uh, – I'll we'll reach out to uh, Keffer or Marcel and see if they have any pointers they'd like to come on and talk about. Sure. But uh, keep watching. Now, North America Overpower League is about ready to start up. we got OKC coming up in April. What's after OKC? Uh, Peace Bridge in Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls. And then us. And then us. And, and then we're in July or August? August. August. And then Seattle in September. Seattle. Hey, Doug Taylor, are you still there? And then Have Boston, we finalized Boston anything in yet? Because we haven't got a date yet. I thought I saw September 21st or 20th or 24th. Was that official? I don't know. I thought that's what they were leaning towards. Or... Um, Larry's not in the chat, so i got to ask Doug if he's still here. And Josh says it's been awesome so far. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. And Captain says thanks, y'all. Great job again. Appreciate you, Captain. Um yeah, we need to get some of these very inexperienced players up here so we can just sit down and teach them how to play the game. And that's kind of what I was trying to do with the Champ of Champs and then running the yeah. second event. Uh, nobody did show up that wasn't already here just to play in that event, but right. just to have fun and hang out and play games. Yeah, we had a very experienced, experienced group here. For yeah. Champ of Champs. Um, Doug says that they're probably September 21st. Okay. So we ha you can't sign up yet. But Larry's got us under the gun. We have to hit a certain number within a certain time period after announcing that date. Maybe That's the only reason I'm asking, Doug, if, if we started that clock yet. And it looks like we haven't since you're saying probably. And I think that number was 20? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I had heard they might lower it. I don't think they need to lower it, but they might. I think it's going to fill up really quick. Yeah, Doug might have 20 out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're still going? Yeah. Yeah. You? Yeah, I'm going. And uh, Stephanie and I are going. I think uh, Corey and his wife are coming out too. Nice. So there's three of us, three players right there. Yeah. Maybe we can talk Laura into playing. You, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, one day an all rookie tournament. Uh, that's an interesting concept. I wouldn't be against it. I would almost rather just do an open play event. Yeah. We also run where you win prize support for the uh, newest player that scores the most points in any tournament that we hold. Yeah. I, I think an open play, just casual play, sit around and play games, and would probably be a better way to get new guys to show up. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to come and get call pounded it a term by – Tournament, it. per se. Yeah, and get pounded by all the veteran players. Sure. Which they may still have fun playing, but – it's not as fun just getting going 0 and 5. Right. Uh, Doug says we are trying to lock up the venue in April. You know what? I do remember you telling me that, that they didn't want to sign an agreement until April. So, uh, okay, that's good. Uh, side tourney for newer players who haven't placed in any top eights uh, or casual play, Josh says. Which we do that after 